Good afternoon and welcome to this Beagle Lawn Pastel Mat on this fine Monday afternoon. I hope you all are doing well and I'm so glad you joined me. Before we get started, I'm going to give you a few announcements, so to speak. I'm Kay Witt and thank you for joining this live broadcast. I am so pleased with the YouTube format. It's been a wonderful experience. I've been able to do more things with this. If you have questions that come up during the broadcast, please post them in the comments section and I will stop about halfway through to answer your questions. My excellent assistant Steve will answer the ones that he can and others he'll save for me and I'll get to those and then we'll have some question and answers at the end of the session as well uh, if you signed up for this class I sent you a photo reference and a photo reference is really really important we're going to be referring to that and painting from that you I can't emphasize that enough. Here's our photo reference. This is Sophie and I'm going to be using this picture of her and following it as closely as I as I can while I paint. Now we're going to be painting on pastel matte today instead of velour which is my usual surface. And I'm using a 9 by 12 piece of pastel mat. And I want to talk a little bit about transferring that. And I'm going to show you how I do that. I've got myself. If um, I've been, it's been told to me that I have a problem with sound. If you can hear me okay, will you let me know? In the meantime, hello Linda, Kathy, Olivia, and do I say that Rizone? And Patricia. Okay, Olivia has sound. Um, thank you, Olivia. So I'm going to show you how to transfer the image. So here's my image. It's all ready to draw. So I have another one, another piece of paper. I have a piece of kind of dirty pastel mat. And I have... have a pencil drawing. So I start all of my paintings like this. Now for this one we're going to use, since the paper's dark, we're going to transfer with white serral transfer paper and I just slip that underneath the painting. And then just use your pencil. I'm going to use a I'm going to use a 9B pencil and go over some of my lines just to show you. I won't transfer the whole thing. So I'll just, just do this section of the ear. And let's see what we have. So I'll flip that up and pull this back and you can see it transfers it beautifully. So if you're doing it on velour paper, use black carbon paper 
if you're using a lighter surface I would also use a, a black uh, paper but for this I wanted to use white now you can see <clears throat> I've had some problem areas on my drawing that I've, I've used a black charcoal pencil on instead of white but those areas were white now if you if you have the the packet you'll be able to follow along and the link to that is in the description box of this video if you want to get one of those now what I um, before I while I'm before I start this project what we're going to do is we're going to put soft pastel down as a base and then we're going to use pencils pastel pencils on top of that so I'm going to start with the eyes I always like to start with the eyes And I'm going to use my black new pastel now if you're in a country that doesn't have new pastels you can use um, polychromo pastel sticks and I sharpen these to a sharp point with an M&R brass two-hole sharpener and there are videos here on YouTube in my playlist that show you how to do that so I'm going to outline my eye. I got some stuff on my picture. I'm going to outline my eye with black. So I'm just using the point. For the pupil, I'm going to use a little feathering kind of stroke to put in that dark pupil. And then do the same thing with the right eye. Pastel pencil Carbothello Kaput Mortem Light, which is 642. And right here on this inner rim, I'm going to add a little bit of this pink color. And as I come around, I'm going to switch to the 720 gray. Put that in. There's a little black area right here. I'm going to put that. Darken this a little bit more. Now, on the inner rim of the other, I'm going to just use the kaput mortem. The, the right eye is in shadow, so we're not going to 
emphasize it as much. I also want to um, stress with you or to you that I'm using um, there are lots of ways to paint with pastel. This is just one way. It's a different take on maybe what you've seen somewhere else. Now let's get this eye to work in. So the first thing we're going to do and I love using new pastels. I think you can do a lot of things with new pastels. I'm going to use this is 253 Cocoa Brown and I'm going to use it as my pupil color. So I'm just going to apply a light coat. Don't want to get too much pastel on the paper. And that's going to be our base coat. I'm going to blend that a little bit. Then I'm going to use 263, which is Indian Red. Place a little bit under the upper lid. zigzag some of this color in and we're going to go darker with 353 which is cordovan picture I can see some gray spots so I'm going to put those in with the 720 gray pencil just a little bit of gray around the pupil now we're going to add some color we're going to pop that out now this is um, Chrome Yellow 207, the new pastel. Put a little bit right here. To the right of the pupil. Take my 266 red, pale vermilion, put a little red down there. And darken my pupil a little bit.
highlights in the eye. I use my light charcoal pencil. I want to put in the corner of the eye, it makes it look a little more moist. And then Put a brighter one right there where it just about is the juncture between the pupil and the iris. And if I use the tip of the new pastel, I can make it a little bit brighter. There's a little moist, I'm going to put a little, another little highlight about right there. That makes the eye look really moist and we, we want to have a moist looking eye. So now let's work on the other eye and do the same thing. This size in shadow, so it's really dark. I don't want it to be super dark, but we're not going to put as much light in it as we did the other one. I'm going to use my 253. Their color. In the eye, and go over that with two sixty three. Indian red, and the three fifty three. Quarter them. pupil a little and more and then I'm going to make it darker with the black up at the top to add that shadow over Bit of color on the right side with the 266 vermilion, and I'm going to blend that. I'm not going to put any yellow over that because this eye is in shadow. I changed my mind, I'll put a little bit of yellow on it. Then I'll put the lights in. And so with this, there's not too much light in this eye. I'm going to put the highlight at the junction of the pupil and the iris. Put a secondary light there. Use the 720 gray to go over the 642 and add just a little bit, brighten that up just a little bit. 
and that pretty much takes care of the eye. Now we're going to work outward around the eye. Now you can see looking at our reference photo that there is a black rim around the eye so that's what we're going to start with. So I'm going to take my black new pastel and I'm going to feather it by using the tip. I'm just going to draw black color out around the eye. Sure, I come down far enough. Now, on this side underneath, this is really the rim of Sophie's eyelid. Now on this, this eye does not have the black circle, it just has a little bit of dark, so I'll put a little bit of dark there. Now I'm going to add some highlights on the rim of the eye, which is right in this area. And this is 235 blue, so I'm just going to put dab in really a little highlight there, which is kind of nice. And then in the corner of her eye, I want to use the 642 Carbothello pencil, and I'm going to draw, which is really, I'm just putting a few strokes here, which I believe is her skin showing through. It's a pink color. I love this color. 642. And pretty much that takes care of that. It looks pretty good. And there's another black little black area there, but we'll take care of that as we when we get to that side of the face. I think I'm going to take my 720 put a few brighter highlights on top of the rim of that eye. We can do a little more with that as we go along. Okay, now we're going to add some color to Sophie. Now, what we're doing is putting in a base coat, as I said before. Pastel matte is, is very good for that. And this is a similar process, although not the same, as we would do on velour. On velour, we use layers of color. On the pastel matte, we're not using quite as many layers. Now, I'm going to take the next color I'm going to use is my Cocoa Brown, my new Pastel 253, and I'm going to add the stroke in hair, being, being careful to how the hair grows on the dog. I'm 
pulling it down from the black in the tip you could use the end just as well to add some darker color. This is the Indian Red. This is the Rembrandt. 411.5. Now this really perks the color up. So this gives a more orangey. It looks very orange on the, uh, it looks red almost, but it, it's not. <laughs> Add a little bit of that. here, put that in. Then in the middle of her face, I'm going to use the Rembrandt, I believe this is 231. I'm just going to put some color in. We need to have more color at the top. And we're going to leave the area that's going to become her white glaze on the front of her nose. We're going to leave that white. Now, this is the cordovan. Just going to add little darker color there. So she's very colorful now. And then on the very edge before we get to the ear we're going to put some 229 black down to her foot. Now we're going to take all of this, put some more color in this area, and we're going to blend it together with our stump. Now what I've learned about stumps is I save one end for dark colors and one end for light colors, okay? And I'm going to blend this the way that the hair grows. And we're going to push it into the paper. I got a little color there on her. I don't, this is white, so I don't want this here, so I'm taking a plastic eraser and taking that off. blending 
the black into that color area. I'm going to switch to a clean side. Now after I get this blended in, I can decide if I want to add more color. I'm going to use the dark side of the stump and blend in that black. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have our base coat for our dog. I think that's um, looking pretty good. Now we're going to use pencils on top of this to create her fur. Now I'm always working from my reference photo as I do this. Now for her fur we're going to use our white charcoal pencil. I'm going to use um, 680 85 Sienna. I got a bunch of stuff here. I'm not using 615. I got in my box. 685 105. I also have a 2B charcoal pencil, so I'm using these colors to work on the fur. This is the 105, the ivory. She's got some white hair up here, so I'm going to add those. And down. This is the Sienna. the ivory. The ivory is very nice over these. And I kind of keep my pencil at a 45 degree angle. Now this is the black, a black 2B charcoal pencil and the reason I'm using it is it's a bit harder. And I'm pulling the black here. Mixing it together. If 
by putting a base coat in, it makes the hair look less grainy, which I had a problem with that with Pesto Mat. It's just got some little tiny lash. It's right there. And we'll go more here. Now the hair gets much whiter right around in here. So we're going to add the white area there. If we need more black hair here, you can pull them in, or you can use your new pastel, whichever works best for you. a little more. It's always if you see something go ahead and correct it when you see it. Using my white charcoal pencil. Then it, the hair gets much lighter, so I'm going to use the ivory and also the sienna in this area. Again, I want to emphasize that I am showing you one way to do something. Could you use a different... type of pastel. I'm pretty sure you could. Could you use um, Unisims as your base coat? Maybe they might be a little heavy. We used Unisims on another project and it worked out really well. So it's, you know, whatever you have on hand. And I think uh, I'm going to make this a little lighter. Art should be fun. And the hair curves over. It gets very white right here. So I'm going to make these a little whiter. And I'm going to stop for questions in a minute. So get your questions ready. And you can put as many or as few hairs in as you want. I'm going to blend that a little bit with my finger. There are a few dark hairs in here. these. 
There's also a nice shine in here on the side of her face. Now, if I had a, um, a blue pastel pencil, which I do, but I also have my 235 blue. I have this, I have both of these, so whichever one you have. This is 435 Carbothello, and I have a light blue. There is a shine here, so I can add that. Or I can do it with this. Actually, I think the new pastel works better because it's a softer pastel. Just add a little blue. A little white on top of it, make it look a little shinier. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's see about your questions. We have people from all over, so welcome to everyone. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Paula. I'm glad you like the mixed colors in the dog's hair. I think dogs can be very colorful, and so I like to include lots of colors when I paint. Thank you, Linda, for joining us from the United Kingdom. If you can, if the sound quality is better now, let me know. Uh, I understand there was some desktop noise, so I've tried to eliminate that. Or background noise. Thank you, Linda, for bringing that to my attention. Does anybody have any questions? move on I'm going to zoom in to the nose and we're going to work on the nose area and the center of the face Zoom in a little bit. Let me move my dog <laughs> if I can. We're going to work right on the center area of the face. Okay, Roseanne has a question. Could this painting be done on any other surface successfully? Absolutely. You could do this on UART. 
six or eight hundred very easily. You could do it on Canson paper. You could do it on um, the Australian paper. It, it the name escapes me at the moment. It wouldn't be the same on velour paper. You don't also you don't have to use anthracite colored paper. It could be the dark blue, it could be the dark gray, it could be the purple. The process would be the same. So you want to put your base coat on and then your pencils on top of it to do it this way. If I was doing it on velour, I would do it an entirely different way. Does that answer your question, Roseanne? Okay, I'm going to move to the center. Of the face. Now let's do the nose first. <laughs> okay, we're going to paint the nose with black, so I'm going to outline it with New Pastel 229. I'm going to leave that little white edge because that's where my highlight is so I can find it later, the easier. So I'm just going to color it in. I'm going to blend it with the dark side of the one that has dark pastel on the side of my blending stick. Just kind of rub it in, get a nice smooth area. Now I'm going to use, um, this is my Carbothello 642, love this color. So I'm going to use this to add some highlights. There is a light on the center of her nose. I'm going to smudge that with my finger. to take my blue 235 the blender into that. So I'm just kind of dotting the color on. I 
and then I'm going to take the white to 11. on top of it. I'm going to put a hint of suggestion of the bottom nostril, but it's in shadow, so I don't want this to show very much. So I'm just kind of blending it out. This is too prominent. I can see this is too prominent, so I'm going to Take that down a bit. And I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. I want to take the edge, the dark edge of my blender, and just kind of smudge some dark color out around the nose. I want to cover up my white transfer line. I want to make this white. Now I could use my white new pastel, but it's harder. I want to use a softer color. So for that, I'm going to use, this is my little piece of, this is Rembrandt 100.5 white. It's softer. So it's going to do the trick better. I want to cover this area. So I'm just going to color it in. Then we're going to blend it. So I don't want to get it too close to the nose that we just put in. By using a softer color, it's going to fill up the tooth better and cover the area better. Straighten up the nose, which I think I do. I do that. So let me switch you back to the reference photo. So I'm just going to go straight up the nose, up the center. So 
we're going to stop at really what's the top of her head. And we're going to get the other side of her head when we come back and do the other side of the face. So we're just going to stop about right there. Okay? Now, please, when you blend this, be sure you use the clean side of your blending stick because you don't want to get any, you don't want to get that black in there. So I'm really pushing. And if I need more color, there's another piece. Come back and add more white pastel. And I'm pushing it up to the edge that we used before. And the reason I picked this photograph is I loved the drama. I could see the great potential in this dog. Add a little more. that I could use a dark background, which is what I wanted to do. I had taken a lot of photographs that day of this dog. And you often have to do that. Until you get one that's just perfect. into the brown area. Don't do like me and get over the edge. So I'm gonna have to take that out with my plastic, my tri-tip eraser. Taking my tip and blending that right next to my nose. Being careful not to get into the nose. Because then we end up with too much black. pretty good.
Now, we want to blend this area with this area. So we're going to use a couple of ways to do that. I'm going to use, um, I have my pencils. charcoal pencil and I have my 685 pencil which is my sienna I can draw in a few sienna hairs. I can also use this if I want a darker hair. I can use the edge of my 253 cocoa brown. Now up here. I think the better color would be the 263, so I'm going to pull a couple of hairs back in. Up here I'm going to use the Sienna. Then what I'll do is use my white to blend the white hair from the muzzle into the face. And take your time and if your pencil gets dull, sharpen it. Make sure you follow direction the hair grows. We're going to use the charcoal pencil for that. So I'm going to use the charcoal pencil to draw the little black hairs that I see on this beagle's nose. Now the reason charcoal pencils, usually we use a 6B because it's the softest. I don't want um, that much charcoal on my picture, so that's why I chose a 2B or a 4B would work as well. It's just harder, so it doesn't deposit as much charcoal. So she's got little black hairs that come out here. I'll 
so I'm going to straighten up this edge. I haven't got too much white on it. Then with my 642, it changes to, picks up kind of a pinkish glow from the couch that she's sitting on. So I'm going to add that there. Then up the center of the nose, I don't know, this is 681, I don't know if it's going to show or not. This is Matter Pink, um, 286. Put a little bit of that here, and then I'm going to put some white on top of it. Put too many in it kind of now you could when you paint your dog or your cat just keep in mind what is the base coat on my dog or cat and start with that and then add your other colors on top so kind of see underneath what the color is and then add that on top and it'll turn out perfect it's always a good starting point this a little um, brighter white. This is 211. I'm just going to put a bit on top. like that. That seems to brighten it up. It's looking really good. Now I want to do this other side of the face, but before I go there, I want to check and see if you guys have any questions. Ok, 
okay, we're all good. Let's move to the other side of the face. I'm going to move this a little bit. Now, the other side of the face, we're going to uh, mostly just white. We're going to put some color on the top of our head. Here's something else I'd like to tell you that Rembrandt uh, 411 5 is probably the same color as just about as the 263 New Pastel. It's a little bit grayer. So I'm going to use it. the 411.5 burnt sienna right along this edge. And then the 229 black The, I believe it's the really the inside of the ear, the underside of the ear. Now, I don't want to get too much black in here, but I want to form a gray, so. I'm just going to outline these areas. Then we're going to put our white in and blend it together carefully.
Now we're going to blend it very carefully. always going in the direction the fur grows. Now on the, I'm going to blend in the brown at the top of her head with the brown side of my blender. Now after blending this black, I have a lot of black on my blender. So I can take that and use it to shade this area that's more in shadow. This is fairly dark, so I'm going to need to add a little black and blend it over there. Make sure I use the right side. pretty good. Now we're going to do the same thing with pencils that we did before. This is my charcoal pencil. Lots of lines here. corner, I'm going to use um, Matter Pink 286. Her skin's really pink, it shows through here. And to darken that, I'm going to take the tip of my blender that has the the black on it and darken that area.
going to use um, the edge of my new pesto, my white new pesto. I want to be a little bit brighter. my wet pot charcoal pencil and a few hairs just like we did before Let me give you a little rule of thumb. Roseanne was asking about working on different papers. When you're working with pastel, you work from the hardest to the lightest, or excuse me, from the hardest to the softest pastel that you have. So you start out with the hard pastels, and then you build softer and softer. Now I want a whiter pastel in the center of the dog's face. So I'm going to look for a whiter, softer pastel stick to do that with. And then we'll, I'll see if you have any more questions. So if you have any more questions for today, now this isn't on your past, on your list if you got a packet, but this is a Giro white it's a little bit softer than Rembrandt and it's a little bit brighter because it's softer and I can put it in some of these areas and get a little bit brighter color I think she's looking a little gaunt in here, and so I want to brighten that up and put a little color on it. A little lighter color and blend that. I'm going to work on that a little bit more. So that's about where I wanted to get for today, and then we'll do the ears and some other things next time we get together. Now, do you have any other questions and our next class will be on Wednesday April the 14th at 1.30 we'll try and figure out what the background noise is I'm sorry if you're experiencing that it was not my intention for sure Give you a minute to ask a few questions. If you have any while I I'm gonna lighten up this area. It's just a little too dark. And I don't like it, so I'm just gonna put some white in over it.
I think the sometimes you just use whatever you have on hand to get the effect that you want. Roseanne would like to know what is the name brand of the white pencil that you use to brighten? This pencil, Roseanne, is the general white charcoal pencil. I'm, I use general white charcoal pencils as well as general charcoal pencils. And I get them from Dick Blick. The white charcoal pencil is made with, uh, from what I understand, calcium carbonite. Oops. And it is a very good pencil. Sorry, you couldn't see the tips there. I think it works probably better than a white pastel pencil. You'd have to judge that for yourself. That's a little too much there. So, so I just keep fooling with it till I get it to be just the way I like it. Oh, do you mean this? Are you talking about this little piece of chalk that I used, Roseanne? This just happened to be one I had in my box. It's made by Giro, which is a French brand. Um, let me type it in the box. But you don't have to use the Giro. Any, I didn't have another uh, white Rembrandt charcoal handy, which is my fault that I didn't have that. This is the Rembrandt, which now I've found it. I couldn't find it earlier. This needs to be dark right here. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope that you'll paint along with me on Wednesday. Grab your materials and uh, help me come along while I finish this dog. And we'll continue to paint her on Wednesday and if we finish her up we won't come back on Friday but we'll see how that goes so if you have any questions email them to me oh yes I don't well I do speak some French Roseanne but it's a you can get them at Dakota art pastels they have the most fantastic pastel they have every pastel there is and I love to use them um, I know they are difficult to find so I try not to use them too much in online uh, projects because I know it's hard for people so put a little more pink there see things that need to change a little bit so join me on Wednesday and if you have any other questions, just let me know. Thank you, Kathy Sweeney. I'm going to make you president of my fan club. I appreciate you all coming and supporting me, and I will see you on Wednesday. <laughs>